Welcome to Beyond the Badge. I'm Amanda Chadnicki and thank you for joining us. We begin with the latest on the Central Fire Station. A press conference was held earlier this morning at the Central Fire Station regarding the station's current condition. Fire Chief Fred Cowper and Township Manager Frank Walsh were at the press conference this morning to address closing the fire station and keeping up with response times to residents. As of Wednesday, February 12th, the Central Fire Station has ceased operations and a complete closure of the building is expected to occur by tomorrow, Friday, February 14th. It was the fire department and the township's hope to continue operating the central fire station. However, there have been health-related and safety concerns for firefighters as well as equipment damage concerns. The damage in the building has actually doubled since last week. Officials do not want the firefighters subjected to falling tiles, water damage, mold, and deplorable conditions any longer. Well, again, we're going to keep our residents number one. We are going to look uh, immediately at a makeshift central location. Um, the other thing too, I want everyone to understand that when we had the ice storm, uh, we had more calls than we've ever had at that you know, period and we were able to take care of all the calls and we did not use this station because the station was without power. According to Chief Cowper, the number of staff will remain the same, but they will be forced to operate out of two stations for the meantime. Needless to say, this will increase the response times to about three minutes longer to many neighborhoods in the township. Chief Cowper said earlier that eventually they plan to use a makeshift building in the central area of the township until a new facility is built. The special use permit for a new fire station was an action item at the February 4th Township Board meeting. I attended the meeting myself and have been following the story for you. Here what, here's what's next. For years there has been talk about replacing the central fire station due to the condition of the building. And back in November of 2012, the township finally decided to do something about it by putting a $3.5 million bond proposal on the ballot. Voters in Meridian Township approved to uh, build a replacement central fire station at the corner of Central Park Drive and Okemos Road. However, a special use permit in Section 61 review were required in order for the new station to move forward. The Planning Commission ended up approving the special use permit request on September 9th of 2013, but it was later appealed by the owners of the Autumn Park Condominium Association. According to their attorney, Lawrence Nolan, the township didn't provide all the information regarding the exact location of the new fire station in the 2012 proposal. Nolan also said that the township didn't correctly notify residents regarding the Planning Commission's public hearings, discussion, and action. We recognized we had made a mistake in our uh, public hearing notice, so we referred it back to the Planning Commission to rehold the public hearing. Since then, it's been back before the board and was an action item on the February 4th agenda. It's going to cost our, our condo association money, time. Um, it's a hardship for a lot of these people to come here and it just keeps dragging on. In the end, Trustee Steika made a motion for Township Manager Frank Walsh and his staff to take another look at the site. According to Trustee Steika, this rework will serve as a compromise for residents concerned about the location of the fire station. However, others, including Clerk Dreyfus, believe the township is beyond a compromise, and it may just be better to slow down the process. Every rush that we've done has caused more delays and more legal problems along the way right now. So we're continuing the same pattern of problem creation right now, real time, right at this moment. The special use permit in Section 61 review will come back to the board in 30 days as an action item on the agenda yet again. In Meridian Township, Amanda Chednicki, Home TV. The Township Board is expected to take action at their March 4th meeting. Township officials haven't just been taking action in their board meetings. They've also been taking action out in this cold weather, handling situations where the township lost heat as well as electricity. Home TV's Melissa Sebring has that story. While some buildings in Meridian Township were out of power for up to 11 days, there were a number of volunteers and employees out in the cold trying to make the situation a little brighter. Uh, I was up north at the time with my family and uh, I told them, pack up, we're leaving, we're going back home. Uh, I'm needed back at uh, Meridian. But the fire chief wasn't the only one who left his family to help out in the cold. Brian Wheeler, a spokesperson for Consumers Energy, said they had more than 70 volunteers guarding down wires until they received appropriate attention. 
Township officials also reached out to both Hazlitt and Okemos schools for a warming shelter. Uh, both of them without hesitation, yes. And without hesitation, that, that's, uh, that makes you feel good, the relationship we have with schools and how they want to step in and help out. The township decided on Hazlitt because of the central location. They had showers, cots, uh, people donated food. The warming center had more than 200 people coming in and out over the power outage. And since this was a long-term power outage, some people began using fireplaces in their homes. There were six house fires on Christmas Eve alone in Meridian Township. Uh, you know, somebody went to the home uh, from a hotel and started a major fire in the fireplace to try to keep the house warm to heat the pipes, and they left to go back to the hotel, and uh, you know the fire broke out of the fireplace. There were no injuries, but the home was destroyed. And here on Christmas Eve, and you have all these people coming there to help and um, give up time with their families. So I really appreciate everyone's effort. All of the homes in the township regained power by New Year's Eve. In Meridian Township, Melissa Sebring, Home TV. Since then, the utility companies and the township have all been looking for ways to improve their response to better prepare for future emergencies. When power and heat were not working in the township, many residents resorted to using their fireplaces. The Meridian Township Fire Department had to put out several fires due to fireplaces being used improperly. Here are some tips from DIYNetwork.com on how to use your fireplace in a safe manner. Make sure you clean your wood-burning fireplace's interior regularly, including its floor. Sweep out or vacuum up cold ashes and wear a dust mask and gloves while doing so. Also have your fireplace inspected and cleaned by a professional chimney sweep at least once a year and even more often than that if soot buildups on the chimney walls rapidly. Lastly, if possible, burn hardwoods like maple, oak, ash, and birch. The advantages of doing this are that hardwoods, hardwoods burn hot and long and have less pitch and sap. This makes them cleaner to handle and tends to cause less soot buildup build as well. For any questions, contact the Meridian Township Fire Department at 517-853-4700. The Meridian Township Fire Department has gone above and beyond the call of duty to serve township residents with an increase of 70 response calls in 2013. Home TV's Alexandria, Alexandra Illich has the details. After successfully passing state testing requirements last month, the Meridian Township Fire Department promoted two dedicated workers Chris Dinsdale, the full-time EMS paramedic, I will support the Constitution of the United States. and Tavis Milleroff, the fire inspector. According to the best of my ability, so help me God. These men will be evaluated daily to ensure top-of-the-line reliability. Firefighters must have credentials of at least two to five years of training, firefighter and paramedic certifications, and a bachelor's degree at minimum. Without those credentials, it's pretty tough to get on the career fire department. So those are the, that's the bottom line. All positions are by contract, maintaining 30 employees on the force with eight being part-time. According to Chief Cowper, the department has really increased their numbers over the last year in terms of response calls. Our calls in our fire department here in Meridian have gone up by 1,000 a year. Every day of the week, firefighters are going through extensive training, whether it is physical agility testing twice a year or sitting in a computer screen working out a scenario. We really work with everybody, you know, through training in my division to make sure they're, they're at the top of their game. Because the firefighters are trained daily, when they get into the truck to respond to emergency, they're prepared for anything. Being equipped with fire and paramedic equipment isn't the only thing the department serves for. They also go the extra mile to help out citizens in need, such as taking residents to and from work. And with the most recent snow and ice storm, spending restless hours helping the community in emergency situations. In Meridian Township, Alexandra Illich, Home TV. In June, a senior battalion chief will be retiring, which will lead to a chain reaction of positions. In doing this, there will be at least three more promotions made within the department. Lately, many people have been struggling to stay warm, especially for those working outside. Home TV's Connor Hansen met up with officials to get some advice on working outside in these frigid temperatures and how to keep warm. Here's the story. With the recent cold weather, it is extra important to stay warm. Fire Inspector Tavis Malarin has some tips. The biggest piece of advice is if you don't have to go outside in the extreme cold weather, don't. Um, stay indoors unless you absolutely have to. Um, if you do go outside, always dress in layers, uh, loose uh, clothing, 
uh, loose fitting layers along with having all of your, uh, as much of your skin uh, covered as, as possible. For some people, going outdoors is unavoidable. Kroger employee Yaya Imran spends most of his day working outside. Usually when we go out to get cars for out here for an hour, but it gets when it gets really cold and the wind's really fast and whatnot, they like uh, send us out 20 minutes and whatnot. But a couple weeks ago when it was just like really cold, we went out for 10 minutes and uh, you know, wear layers upon layers, gloves, hats, scarves, just do not show any skin at all so we don't get frostbite. and. Uh, that's kind of it. You'd get hand warmers once we got inside and like hot chocolate. It was pretty cool, but uh, yeah, that's what we do. Being in the extreme cold uh, is very taxing on the body, very taxing on the heart. If you're shoveling snow, doing, uh, exerting a lot of uh, physical work, um, just slow down and take your time. For more tips on how to stay safe and warm during this Michigan winter, visit bt.cdc.gov slash disasters slash winter. When we come back, we sit down with Lieutenant Frenger to learn about some local cases in Meridian Township. You're watching Beyond the Badge on Home TV. You may have noticed a change in outdoor warning sirens. Here's what you need to know. In Ingham County, all outdoor warning sirens will be tested at 1 o'clock p.m. on the first Saturday of every month. Every other Saturday, a silent test will be conducted. If you hear the sirens at any other time than the testing time, that means there's severe weather in the area. Please take shelter immediately and tune to your local TV or radio stations for further updates. Having a plan in place will keep your family safe. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. <laughs> if you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Welcome back. I'm sitting here with Lieutenant Greg Frenger. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to start off talking today about two specific cases that have been happening um, in Meridian Township. They were trials that happened and they proved to be not competent. Um, can you just explain about those two trials for me? What exactly happened in those cases? Well, the, the two cases you're referring to involve Ronald Rule, who was arrested. Uh, because he was uh, naked and fought with police officers uh, in late 2013. The other case is Greg Basolo, who is charged with open murder for the homicide of his father at this time. Uh, both individuals went to court and uh, during the court proceedings before the actual trial has even begun, uh, there was a question about their mental competency. So in both cases, individuals were sent to Forensic Center by the judge and uh, uh, evaluated. Uh, Mr. Rule is still, I believe, uh, being evaluated and uh, Basolo has been deemed competent to uh, stand trial. Okay, thank you. And with that, what exactly does it mean to be considered not competent in a courtroom setting for those that may not know? Well, uh, the competency has to be established to determine whether or not the individual is, is able to assist in their own defense. So it's not a decision as to whether, um, you know, a specific diagnosis or anything like that. It doesn't excuse the crime. It just 
is the, the steps in the process before trial uh, to ensure that that individual who's being tried is able to assist or participate in the court proceedings and trial and uh, competent to uh, help in their own defense. Okay, and with that, um, you know, there's been two trials where this has came up as of lately. I personally haven't heard about it that much until recently, and that's exactly why we're doing the interview today. Have you seen as an officer or a lieutenant that it's been more common? Uh, no, you know, it probably happens more than the public recognizes. Um, uh, these are two high profile cases, certainly with other cases that, that don't involve um, the media attention that these two have, have received. Uh, there are many of them that, that uh, individuals that are sent through this process uh, to ensure that they're able to help themselves through the, the trial itself. So these individuals have, you know, they've been charged um, and there's not been even a preliminary exam on either one of these individuals yet. They're still in the pre-court uh, uh, setting, uh, basically of, the, of an actual trial. Uh, determining these steps and, and ensuring that they're, they're able to, uh, to go to trial eventually. Okay, and going back to those two cases that we mentioned earlier, um, Basalo seemed to be fine beforehand from what we know and appear not competent in trial, whereas Rule, um, his lawyer, said that he had post-traumatic stress disorder possibly beforehand. Um, are those two individuals or cases like that if they have a mental illness before they go on trial versus they seem to be mentally ill in trial, are they treated differently? Is that, um, how do they go about doing that, distinguishing that? Well, the, the question of competency, mental competency for um, the purpose of going through trial is brought up generally by the defense uh, before proceedings begin. Okay. It may be brought up by the prosecution to ensure that you know this uh, case is handled properly. Uh, whatever mental illness or, or problems a person is having prior to the crime, um, I guess they're taken into consideration maybe during the trial if that information comes out, but it doesn't excuse the actual event. So, uh, and I don't know if either one of these individuals. Uh, has a mental illness or um, mm -hmm. any of the information about, uh, uh, in particular, Mr. Rule and, and uh, post-traumatic stress. I don't know if that's true or not. That is information that his attorney has provided yes. uh, in a press release. So uh, I think what, what uh, I'm trying to get at here is that if you're mentally ill and you commit a murder, uh, it does not automatically excuse you from that violation or that crime, mm -hmm. uh, there still needs to be these steps taken um, to ensure that you're able to stand trial. Uh, whether a jury decides that that excuses your behavior is up to a jury. A judge doesn't decide that, the prosecutor doesn't decide, and certainly the, you know, the defense doesn't decide that prior to ever actually having an actual trial on the, on the case. Okay, thank you. And is there anything else that you want to add on this, something that the public should know about being about these trials that they don't really hear about as much? No, um, you know, the, uh, the rural case is right now in limbo because uh, the forensic has not been completed. Uh, Basolo is scheduled for a preliminary exam uh, this week, and so we may see further developments there. Uh, but uh, I really don't have any other information that's not already been discussed that I can disclose. Okay, well thank you so much for joining us again. When we come back, we'll take a look to see what the police department in Meridian Township has been up to lately. You're watching Beyond the Badge on Home TV. What happens when I call 911? How do police investigate a crime? What is officer safety? Why is it important to me? Become a more informed citizen by attending Meridian Township Police Department Citizens Academy. The free program helps you get informed, participate in your community's crime prevention effort, and build a relationship with your police department. To learn more about the Academy and sign up, visit meridian.mi.us. 
If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. In a world filled with unanswered questions about taxes, questions are answered. Lost your bill? Connect to our website and look up your current tax bill. Can't remember if you paid? Log in and see. Want to know what your neighbor's paying taxes? Check it out online. GIS map assessing and tax information gets you the answers you need now. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Welcome back. As the weather continues to cause trouble for township residents on and off the road, it's nice to know that two townships have teamed up to ensure the safety of residents. Home TV's Molly Cassidy has that story. The signs are all there. What's been called the Arctic Blast doesn't look to be letting up anytime soon, but times have been tougher. This sort of occurred when the economy was, was still down. Neighboring Williamstown Township found along Sherwood Road voted for assistance from the Meridian Police Department in 2011 and contracted an agreement for police services, an agreement that's been extended through 2014. Whatever they're needed for, they respond because they are the police officers for Williamstown Township. The contract calls for two officers to spend a combined total of 80 hours a week in Williamstown Township. Now, if the officers are called when not on duty, Williamstown Township will pay the difference. The total cost for calendar year 2012 over and above the regular hours that they were in the township was only $12,847, and for 2013, it's less, it's $10,897. The nearly $2,000 decrease in payments for off-duty assistance isn't the only drop in numbers. 911 calls in Williamstown Township are down as well. I think it's a great idea, uh, mainly because we're border um, townships. And I think we've enjoyed the relationship, and there's no doubt about it. The two townships hope to extend the contract that is up for renewal at the end of this year. In Meridian Township, Molly Cassidy, Home TV. In Williamstown Township, taxpayers are actually paying less this year for the contract, despite the increase in pay for the current veteran officers. The Meridian Township Police Department is currently seeking applicants for the 2014 Youth Citizens Police Academy. The academy has been a successful program since 2006. The academy will meet on Thursday nights from February 20th to April 3rd, where students from area high schools can experience what police officers do on a daily basis. Those interested in attending can call the police department at 517-853-4800. Hazlitt Area Girl Scouts recently chose Officer Gaylord Mankowski of the Meridian Township Police Department as their hometown hero. Because of his charity work in the community, including his annual children's holiday party for underprivileged families in the area. The Girl Scouts received donations to provide 36 cans, boxes of chocolates, candy, and nuts to be donated to Officer Minkowski for his holiday party. I just enjoy doing it. I wish I didn't have to do it in a sense. I wish everybody could grow up like I did and, and most people, but that's not the case. The Girl Scouts recently presented Officer Minkowski with the items at a small ceremony at the police station. Congratulations once again, Officer Minkowski from Home TV. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. Don't forget to like Beyond the Badge on Facebook. And remember, you can always watch us online at hometv.net. I'm Amanda Chadnicki. Be sure to be safe, and we'll see you next time here on Beyond the Badge.